Alrighty, our gospel lesson today comes to us from John, the 10th chapter. You will find this on page 126 in the New Testament portion of your Bible. John 10, beginning at verse 11, and this is Jesus speaking. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life for the sheep, in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, that was some lovely weather we had last weekend. No? No. Mm -hmm. No is the answer. (laughs) Like many of you, I was not impressed with that spring blizzard. It is April, and that is just not what we expect. My friends down in Iowa are sure sick of it, too. I have seen lots of videos and posts and complaints and memes and jokes about it all. I even saw a news clip from both Cedar Rapids and Madison where the cop comes in to jokingly arrest the weather forecaster for a bad forecast. Did you see that? Yeah, not exactly how the weather works, of course, but it reflects our desperation, I think, to finally get what we expect, which is spring. (laughs) Because no matter how old we get, if we don't get what we expect, it just doesn't sit well. Take our gospel lesson today. We are out of the post-resurrection accounts this week and back to one of the incidents that led to Jesus' death. The speech Jesus gives today about being the good shepherd, that is part of the evidence against him. Jesus' contemporaries expect a Messiah who is a warrior king and not a sacrificial lamb. For many, Jesus being the Christ was not a pleasant surprise. I know that it's hard for us in Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin, all the way in 2018, to hear the danger in what Jesus says in his gospel today. To us, this passage is sweet comfort. Think of all the artwork you have seen in your time as Jesus as the good shepherd holding a lamb. Many churches I visit have that picture somewhere with Jesus with a lamb over his shoulders. You've seen something like that, I'm sure. Other than usually being racially incorrect, depicting a Middle Eastern Jew like Jesus as a white man, these pictures are really rather sweet and placid and comforting. I love them. But his words that day reported in John's Gospel, them's fighting words. See, way back in chapter 9, verse 40, Jesus tells us that that the Pharisees are listening to Jesus too. Jesus is not just speaking to you and me and his disciples, a like-minded, agreeable crowd. There are a bunch of other people there too. Disciples, yes, yes, they are there. But also people who are curious, who want to know more about this Jesus guy. And there are people present who oppose him on principle. There is nothing he could say to win them over. And those are the Pharisees. 
They dislike Jesus because they can't control him or use him for their own purposes. They fear Jesus because he does have followers. His message of love, grace, and mercy is undercutting their power, even though that should be their message too. The Hebrew Bible is full of those same messages. Jesus isn't teaching anything new or different here, but neither is he supporting the establishment with his work. In this mixed group of people with various reasons for being there to hear him, Jesus goes ahead and says this radical statement. He says, I am God, and that automatically ranks him higher than all the governments and world leaders, right? I am God, Jesus says. But maybe you missed it, because what it sounds like is, I am the good shepherd. See, for Israel, the good shepherd was an image of God. The sacrifice, the love, the work of the good shepherd is scattered all throughout the Hebrew Bible. It is not just in our beloved 23rd Psalm or the familiar Isaiah 40, which says he tends his flocks like a shepherd, the prophet Ezekiel makes much of this image, saying that the leaders of the people have failed God and the people by caring only for themselves. How does John, 1 John put it from our reading today? They are ones who have the world's goods and see a brother and sister in need and yet refuse to help. In Ezekiel, God lashes out at the leaders by naming them bad shepherds and declaring that the Lord our God is the good shepherd. God. God is the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is God. And this teaching itinerant rabbi is not what people expected. And I wonder... Is Jesus really what we expect either? I mean, we pray and expect our prayers to be answered in the manner we desire and in the time frame convenient for us, right? We wonder why God doesn't just fix things for the world, for us, for our loved ones, right? We expect God to answer our prayers like a genie from a bottle grants wishes. But the Bible never promises that. What the Bible tells us, even from the most ancient writings like that of the 23rd Psalm, is that we will never, never be alone. God promises presence, sustenance, mercy, love, forgiveness, compassion, comfort. God is the good shepherd traveling with us in life from times of peace, places of still waters, into times of action and decision, which we all know is bound to ruffle somebody's feathers. God knows and we know that we cannot remain stagnant in life. And God promises to be with us through it all, good and bad, times of trial and victory. Presence is the promise. It reminds me of a story that our son Anderson tells. Like his father, he has a freakishly good memory. Uh, he recalls being much younger and out with his dad at a store, and he wanted to see something, so Anderson stepped away just a couple of steps, not too far, and when he was done, he wanted to go back to his dad, right? So he did that thing that ki little kids do. He grabbed his dad's leg, and he looked up at Paul, and the man looking back was not his dad. Right? Right. And, and the man was not perturbed. He was perfectly friendly, but Anderson was scared. He wanted his dad, the one who tickled and teased him, the one who made him breakfast in the morning and put him to bed at night, the one who played and read stories to him, the one who disciplined him and loved him. 
Thankfully, his dad was right next to that other guy, and Anderson quickly got to the right set of legs. <laughs> Anderson remembers this story because he was afraid. He said, I could share it with you today. I did ask. <laughs> As an example of our longing for the one we love, the one who loves us, the good shepherd whose constant presence is something we can rely on, even if we become confused or make some mistakes along the way. God remains, and there really is no substitute. And I think that's what terrified the powers that be. They were bad shepherds, looking after their own interests, as Ezekiel put it, and not the flock. Jesus, with his mercy and his might, is the good shepherd. And there just is no substitute for the one true good shepherd. Without fear of consequence, Jesus speaks the truth. I am the good shepherd. In other words, I am God. We hear these words and find gentle comfort, but maybe we too need to have expectations shook loose by the truth that Jesus speaks. Maybe it's time to listen intently for the voice of our Good Shepherd who knows our name. Instead of demanding it break through all the noise we surround ourselves with, maybe it's time for us to love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action, as 1 John says. Maybe it's time for us to believe exactly what Jesus says, that he lays down his life and picks it up again. For he is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. And the resurrection surpasses all expectations. This week in my studying, I found a modern translation of the 23rd Psalm, and their version of the first verse really encapsulates all this. This is what it says. The Lord is my shepherd. What more could I want? May you hear the voice of our good shepherd, Jesus Christ, who loves you and calls you by name. Amen.